Hey everyone, it is Coach Callie with Coordinated Coaching and today oh, I had to uh, I had to kind of say what I was going to say a little bit just to knock the tears out of my voice, all the emotion, but uh, today's a big day. It's a comma and a lot of girls' journeys here in Flagstaff that are playing softball. Not a period, that's for dad, I'm sure. But um, our juniors team, softball, they're done. They lost last night. But I think a lot of them won in more ways than one. Um, I'm not one to check my phone first thing in the morning. But when, <laughs> when I go to shut my alarm off this morning, I saw that I had two new messages. And I was like, well, that's weird. But there were messages from yesterday that just kicked through. Gotta love my phone service, I know. So if you personally know me, you know I have the best phone service ever in this area. If I actually get closer to the tower, it really truly rocks. But anyways... I saw that I had one message from one of my one-on-one -on -one athletes, mom, and she sent me this video, and as I'm reading the text, she says, so proud of her hit, although they didn't get the win. I literally sat there and pushed play on that hit over and over again, because, I mean, just a matter of days ago, she and I had worked together not only to, uh, how would you say, I don't want to say reconstruct, just kind of make some tweaks in her hitting because there wasn't a lot of things truly, truly wrong. Um, it was small enough that we were able to make those little tweaks and little fixes in order for her to just be able to go into this All-Stars tournament and not feel overwhelmed. Um, I'm not a coach that likes to fix things right before the game. Like, eh. That's kind of tough, and you got to put yourself in that athlete's shoes. Are you going to be able to do the same thing in that scenario? You know, gray space. But anyways, this girl came to me a little emotionally defeated. Uh, she was only getting so many at-bats. You know, with Little League, you're guaranteed so much playing time just to kind of even things out. And when she was batting, um, she just was not doing what her heart and her head wanted her to do, let alone her gut. Uh, you know, after reading her journal, because I do require my one-on-one -on -one athletes to journal, I call it mental madness, and I, I gave her a journal assignment prior to coming to working with me, and after reading it, it was just a lot of things became very clear, um, and I could see it in the physical part of her swing as well. There was a lot of apprehensiveness, a lot of uncertainty, which I think we, as adults, if you're listening to this and you're a coach, we face that every day. We can sit there and train our athletes, train them all day long, you know, to where we know they can do it, but sometimes they don't know they can do it. Like, that's, that's the tricky part. That's the bridge that we have to continue to not only reconstruct in our athletes, but we have to be okay with our athletes when they kind of destroy their bridge to success. Um, that to me is just personal adversity. That's just overcoming um, doubt and fear. Well, this young lady, she, <laughs> on this video, she overcame it. And I'm, I'm, literally, I'm literally sitting there in my bed. Like I said, I'm not one to check my phone. Like I am a firm believer and you don't give the morning to your phone. I, I give the morning to God. Like that's, I get out of bed and head straight to the office and do what I need to do to be close to God because, and that's why, that's another reason why I work out in the mornings because I know by the end of the day I'm smothered, <laughs> like I'm done. Like, girl, I don't need a glass of wine to take me to bed. I just need to know when my head hits that pillow I'm out because I ran all day long. That's how I function. That's a product of the work ethic that I was raised in. So, I'm sitting there watching this. And I'm just going through all the physicalities of her swing. Oh my gosh, look at her. She's stacked. Okay. Hip. Yes. Shoulder. Yes. And she even hit, like, it was like an oppo hit. It was like, um, I, I believe, from what I could see from the video, I believe it was somewhere in the vicinity of center and right. Especially the way all the filters moved. And I apologize for that. And it just, I started to get tears in my eyes because 
I know what she walked into on our first session a couple days ago. And I also know how she walked out of that session. There was confidence gained. Now, like I said, you can train your athletes to where you think they can do it, but it's a matter of them thinking they can do it. And she obviously took it. Now, mind you, I got three more sessions with this girl, and I'm, I'm hoping that this will just ignite a fire in her to continue to keep growing. Because what I saw in that video <laughs> was a perfect hit was a perfect hit and even though they lost it still was a perfect hit like she did her job as a batter she got on then come to find out her mom was like I wish I would have got how excited her team was for her in the dugout on video that right there's a whole nother connection to the confidence right because when we practice we gain confidence guys when you're in practice when your athletes are in practice you can't just let them be crickets like <laughs> They still need to practice inspiration and motivation within their team. They still need a good hit, way to feel, da da da, because they are going to purge all that on the field. If you allow your girls or your boys, if you're listening to this and you coach boys, if you allow them to be quiet, then that's exactly what you're going to get in a game. And shame on you for expecting anything more during a game. If you want your players to play well in a game, you better make them practice just as good if not better in practice y'all feel me on that okay so super excited for her then as I'm scrolling through Facebook I see okay the girls are out and I start seeing the posts from the moms that I have had the pleasure of knowing for gosh one of them forever because her oldest boy and our oldest boy played Little League together and so her daughter used to just tote our daughter around like she was the best little baseball little sister babysitter <laughs> I loved it as I'm reading it uh, again with the tears super emotional here it comes again so I had mentioned earlier that for a lot of these girls this is just a comma because the next four years like <clears throat> The majority of these girls are going into high school and some of them still have a year left of middle school and they'll probably still <clears throat> play another year of little league but just to have the privilege the honor to be able to speak love power wisdom discipline self-worth into these girls lives like wow and to know that they're going to take it. They're going to take it and they're going to carry it throughout their life. I mean, as a coach, isn't that the main goal? Don't don't get don't get caught up in the wins and losses cuz I really feel like <clears throat> you never lose. You always learn. And if you feel like as a coach you lose, then oh, you better do some soul searching because it's not about wins or losses. It's not about the Xs and the Os. It's about what did it take to get to that point? What did that kid have to overcome to get to that point? What did you as a coach, balancing your family life, coach your own kids? What did you have to get through to get to where you are? Whatever adversity you're facing, right? And to me, it's about sending these girls off with the notion of becoming successful adults, but not just like successful softball players because to me there's so much more than just softball and you're talking to a coach who used to just softball 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 so like I built my college career around softball family was not even in the equation I never really sat down and planned my wedding like I never I just never thought about that stuff I honest to goodness thought that I was gonna go to school to become a teacher so I could have summers off so I could play on minor league fast pitch teams. And then after doing that for at least two years, getting my stats up and then trying out for Team USA. I grew up with a powerful Team USA softball team to look up to. I'm talking Dot Richardson, Lisa Fernandez, Michelle Smith, like, you know, the ones that are just the foundation of why softball needs to be back in the Olympics. Just gonna put it out there. Um, but 
these girls, how these girls, they're going to be young ladies one day. And it is with great hope that they start to remember these things. And as adults, when they're faced with that adversity, they are able to pull out something from a softball game and be able to apply it to their life situation and overcome it. You know, head coach Brittany Mata at South Mountain Community College down in Phoenix, she and I have really connected over the last year because we have a lot of connective tissue in the aspect of how softball is more than just softball, how it just prepares you for life. This is why we love this game. I mean, softball and baseball. I swear to goodness, we are the ones, us and baseball players are the ones that will practice the same play a hundred times over with no guarantee that we're ever going to have the opportunity to run that play in a game. That's crazy. I mean, if you truly think about it. So this is where Brittany and I really agree with how much gain how much strength, how much outlook you gain on how to overcome adversity as an adult in life, how to balance life, you know, or actually, I don't want to use the term balance, but how to um, offset, like, I don't think you can truly balance life, I think you have to be able to kind of put a little bit here, put a little bit there, put a little, you know, keep your priorities in row, I hope that makes sense, makes sense. So with that being said, I just realized I kind of went off on a ramble, but this is a very uh, heartfelt vlog here, even though you can't see me. I just figured the voice would be a lot better. Um, these girls have came so far. Last year, a lot of these girls on this team were the 12 U Western Regions champions, and were three runs away from the Little, World, Little League World Series. So they have, like, oh, overcame so much, like... It's just bananas. Like when I sit here and I think about how long, A, how long I've known these girls, B, how I've watched them grow and C, like, oh, here comes the next chapter. Like I get excited and I get sad. <laughs> I haven't ever had the privilege of coaching them on the field, like in a game. But what I have had is the opportunity to speak into these girls, whether they've been my one-on-ones or they've caught for one of my one-on-ones. Or they've shagged for one of my one-on-ones. Just being around me. It's like that is an opportunity to love on these girls. To, to let them know like, hey, you were made to do great things. Don't ever let anybody tell you different. You're good at softball. Use it as a tool to get to the next step in your life. So with that being said, I want to also say good job to the tens they won again they got their second win at state which is another soft part in my heart because I have personally coached some of those girls on that team since they were four years old and whew, some of these girls are my own daughter's teammates my own daughter's friends so I know these girls like they're like little family and just to know that they are moving and they are making memories. I'm probably going to make another podcast, excuse me, not a podcast, but another vlog about these girls down the road. And it's going to have a lot of the same meaning behind it. That connection, that value of just privilege of being a part of their journey. It's, it's true honor. So you girls, you did great. I'm super proud of you and your coaches. The head coach, we have been coaching together for five years. Um, that's crazy. It, I swear he's like a brother, like, <laughs> you know, and it's just when you have that kind of bond with somebody and again, it's going back to softball. Look how much I've learned even as an adult about softball, like, holy cow, you know, it's just, it's crazy. So ladies, keep it up. Keep owning your opportunity to do great things by focusing on the little things because the little things always make the bigger better. The next team that I'm going to bring up here, they, they're a good little team. They got a lot going and they have some very amazing, talented players. Super proud of this team. They actually face their first, I believe it's their first loss in 
the all-star tournament and it's been pretty awesome to watch them grow as young ladies a lot of these young ladies a lot of these young ladies play have played for other teams and they have just shined on those teams like it's crazy how much adversity some of these players have met there's two of them that I think have been in different states <laughs> probably for a month every week you know that that's adversity right there and that's all been softball so it's it's pretty awesome to watch this team and um, these girls I'm actually sitting here scrolling through one of the moms Facebooks I'm just just overcome I, I have connection with some of these girls one-on-one -on -one, and again it's just that privilege that opportunity to be able to speak love, speak words of power and wisdom into these girls. So, the Majors, last night, lost their first game. I say bring it on. <laughs> bring it on, because you guys got a handful of amazing, strong-willed players. Girls that just have their heads on their shoulder just tight enough to where they can still breathe that's what I love about this team to me this is just gonna add more fuel to their flame so looking at one of the moms Facebook it looks like they play again tonight at 630 against Casa Grande so we'll see what they do um, but if, if I could throw an example out there as to how to overcome it Think about the twelves last year, how they got beat. They got beat. It was one to nothing. And they came back the next night and beat them. So it's possible. It's possible. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get off here. I haven't even gone to the gym yet. I'm like, I had to just act on this emotion and just pour into you guys as coaches just to hear it. I know some parents are going to listen to this. And I, parents, I'm grateful for you guys, especially within this community. We probably have some of the best softball parents ever. And I'm not going to hold you to a perfect, how would you say, pedestal. Because I think everybody deserves gray space. I think every parent gets frustrated with playing time. Um, even with their daughter's performance. Like, what is your problem? You practice so much and then you go out and do that. Like, I think that's normal. I wouldn't expect anything less, anything more. What I do love about these parents within our community is if, they do that it's almost like they just realize okay I was I was out of whack I shouldn't have approached you you know I, I my co-coach and I love to tell our parents you know connection of communication is always strong just give us a day if you have a problem give us a day to come talk to us don't talk to us right after the game and I think for the most part the parents in this community do that and the ones that don't they learn real quick how to do that by the examples that are set by other parents in this community. So thank you to all the parents that have been supporting not only your daughter, but all the other daughters in this community, including mine, and the coaches in just developing these young athletes to go out into the world to do great things, to owning their opportunity. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here, but let's do it again. Tens, let's get another win. Majors, you can totally do this trust yourself that loss last night is hashtag history write it on your shoes do what you need to do and let's do this all right juniors i love you all you guys are going to go on and do big things got high school careers right around the corner so think of this as your moment whew, to woosa to breathe a little bit and get ready for high school to get ready for eighth grade you guys got big things coming into your life allow them to come in and embrace you in a positive way God's got a plan. Take care. God bless.